Hello friends and welcome to a new sofa session here at Siwi, the World Water Week. Uh, we're here in Stockholm, we have a live audience um, and we're, go we're going to be discussing a very interesting topic here. Uh, I have two wonderful uh, guests with me. Um, the topic that we're going to be addressing is pharmaceutical residues in fresh water, so hazards and policy. Um, thank you, Hannah, and thank you, Mark, for joining me today. Hannah Lecky, sitting next to me, is a water policy analyst in the Environment Directorate of the OECD. So she leads the OECD's work on water quality. Mark, sitting next to her. Mark de Roy is Deputy Head of Unit Water Quality at the Dutch Ministry of Infrastructure and Water Management, so uh, the Dutch government. He's in charge of the National Programme on Pharmaceutical Residues in Water. Let's move on uh, straight to the matter. Hannah, you are here representing the OECD and launching a, the policy highlights of a report. Could you tell us more about both the report and the highlights? Yes. Thank you, Manu. So, for those that may not know, the, the OECD, or the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development, mm -hmm. is an intergovernmental organisation mm -hmm. with an economic focus. It's, it's designed to drive economic growth mm -hmm. um, and provide policy guidance for better lives. Um, we provide guidance on a number of topics, mm -hmm. from um, taxes to public health and in education and, and where I work in environment. Okay. Um, so this report is um, the result of over two years of research um, and engagement with a number of stakeholders from the pharmaceutical industry, from different government sectors and officials um, representing chemical sector, mm -hmm. environment sector and human health um, and agriculture health. And also a number of NGOs, um, academia, the pharmaceutical industry, and um, water and wastewater utilities. Wonderful. Mark, um, could you please offer the perspective of the Netherlands here? Um, why are managing pharmaceuticals a policy priority in your country? Yeah, uh, thank you for the question. It's a policy a priority for two reasons. The first one is that more and more we see the effects of pharmaceutical residues in the aquatic environment, so mainly on fish and smaller animals. And then you can think of um, uh, tissue damage, uh, endocrine disruption, and evil, even uh, behavioral, challenge, uh, behavioral changes. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is not uh, so much of a surprise because pharmaceuticals are meant to have biological effects. And the second reason is uh, drinking water. We have a very high drinking water quality in the Netherlands, and we would like to uh, keep it that way. Mm -hmm. But with the aging uh, population, uh, well, people will uh, use more pharmaceuticals and uh, of, or also discharge more pharmaceutical residues. And we actually see it um, uh, happening uh, at this moment. Uh, well, the issue with, with medicines is we cannot stop using them. Uh, uh, patients need pharmaceuticals to cure their, uh, their, their diseases. But at the same time, uh, the, the current wastewater treatment facilities only remove a part of those pharmaceutical residues. And, um, well, to give you an idea, in the Netherlands um, we estimate that about uh, 140 tons is uh, discharged into the water uh, every year. Mm. And to, uh, to put, put this in perspective, that is eight times more than uh, the amount of pesticides that is uh, discharged into the water, which is also uh, a problem for, uh, for water quality. Now, of course, this poses a dilemma. We, we need them and we don't want them in, in our waters. And yeah. this is why we, why we call it an example of a, of a wicked problem. Wicked problems are uh, not easy to define. They have no clear-cut solutions. And they are characterized by um, scientific uncertainty. Many stakeholders with uh, lots of interests and, and different values. And also um, institutional complexity. So it means that there are a lot of government bodies involved. And that's why they tend to remain unsolved for longer periods. On the other hand, the general public is urging us to, to further improve the water quality. And well, that's why we are very happy with uh, initiatives like the um, uh, pharmaceutical strategy document that is uh, issued by, um, uh, by the European Commission uh, earlier this year mm -hmm. and by this OECD uh, report. Wonderful. So yeah, you just mentioned the report. Hannah, when is the report going to be um, available? And where can people find it? So the, the policy highlights are available on online now. Okay. Um, these are the policy highlights. Wonderful. You can find this and, and then the full report online in, in the next month or two 
at OECD. Um, dot org forward slash water. Wonderfully done. So why should we be concerned about this, about pharmaceuticals in the environment and why is this a problem? Well, it's an increase in concern on the, the public agenda. Um, so this, this report in the first place was very much demand driven by our OECD member countries. Mm -hmm. It's really a hot topic right now. Mm -hmm. um, and the problem is that 30 to 90 percent of the oral pharmaceuticals that we do take um, are excreted into the sewage, sewage system and then end up in the water cycle. Um, and that does not account for um, also pharmaceuticals used in um, agriculture and aquaculture, which directly enter the environment. Yeah. Also pharmaceuticals that are improperly disposed of down the toilet or down the sink can end up in the environment. Um, and also, of course, pharmaceutical manufacturing plants can release pharmaceuticals through their wastewater into yeah. the environment. And often we see very high concentrations mm -hmm. um, in proximity to manufacturing plants. And a result of all of this, where we're seeing pharmaceuticals in surface water and groundwater being detected all across the world. Um, and then when we look at the risks, um, there's a, still a lot we don't know, but we estimate that about 10% of pharmaceuticals have the potential to cause environmental harm. Okay. Um, Mark's mentioned some of the potential um, effects, such as psychiatric drugs can alter fish behaviour and make them more prone to um, predation from their predators. Mm -hmm. um, the misuse and overuse of antibiotics is contributing to antimicrobial resistance, which is very much a global health crisis at the moment. Yeah. Um, but as I said, there's so much we don't know, um, and unless action is taken, um, the situation is set to get worse. So based on, on the current trade, um, should we be concerned? In short, um, yes. There's, unless action is taken, we're, we're likely to have more pharmaceuticals in the environment. Yeah. Um, and as our knowledge and information improves, we'll learn more about their impacts. Um, but yes, as populations age, lifespans increase, population grows, we're going to have more pharmaceuticals being used and yeah. then enter the environment. There's new pharmaceuticals being produced all the time. Um, as food demand increases, so will livestock and um, other agricultural practices need to intensify and, and use more pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. um, we're also seeing um, climate change as exacerbating diseases in the world. And, and with that temperature increase and rainfall variability, we're likely to see more diseases, more use of pharmaceuticals. I see. We learn what, what the Dutch government is doing. What, what is being done by other governments to tackle this issue? So what we've found is that often country responses firstly focus on water quality monitoring. Mm -hmm. um, although the vast majority of pharmaceuticals remain unmonitored. Yep. Uh, and we also see some countries taking um, end of pipe measures such as wastewater treatment upgrades. So Switzerland's um, the classic case where they've upgraded a number of large wastewater treatment plants to remove um, pharmaceuticals. Okay. But there's two problems with these uh, approaches. Mm -hmm. Firstly, um, water quality monitoring. There's um, over 4,000 pharmaceuticals in use um, mm -hmm. at the moment, mm -hmm. and it's just not practical economically or technically to monitor for all of these and to do environmental risk assessment for all of these pharmaceuticals. Um, and in addition, new pharmaceuticals are being engineered all the time. Yeah. And then secondly, um, upgrading wastewater treatment plants is extremely costly. Um, there's high operation and maintenance costs. There's a lot of uh, energy use, high carbon footprint, and not all pharmaceuticals are removed by current wastewater treatment technologies. And then um, the second point is that wastewater treatment plants, of course, can't remove diffuse sources of pollution from mm -hmm. agriculture and aquaculture. Yeah, cool. So we're, we're, we're missing that part that's not captured in, in the wastewater treatment cycle. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think the current state of affairs is now, is now clear. And you say solutions are not enough, right? So what are the OECD recommendations in this sense? Well, firstly, I'd just like to qualify that pharmaceuticals are really important for human and animal health, for economic welfare and human well-being. Um, so we're not here to, to restrict access to pharmaceuticals. Um, but we do have five key recommendations. Let's, 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 let's learn. Yeah. Tell us the five ones. So, so firstly, um, we really do need to increase our knowledge and understanding or, and reporting yeah. of pharmaceuticals and the environment, their impacts, um, and, and then to 
to do that to be able to lay the ground for, mm -hmm. for future policy. Mm -hmm. Um, so in the moment we're seeing Korea, they're doing a lot of um, suspect and non-target screening okay. to inform their water quality monitoring programs. Okay. The second recommendation is um, preventative approaches, source-directed approaches. And by that we mean, um, for example, procurement, um, mm -hmm. public procurement to um, require good manufacturing practices mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. reduce pharmaceuticals from entering the environment. We can also design incentives for green pharmacy or mm -hmm. for personalised medicine to reduce um, the use of pharmaceuticals or the use of harmful pharmaceuticals. Um, this, the third recommendation is around use-directed approaches. So that's targeting um, the, the doctors, the veterinarians and the patients themselves. There's a lot we can do around raising awareness around health and wellbeing and hygiene practices to prevent the need of pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. um, there's work we can do with, um, for instance, Germany have an envi environmental checklist for veterinarians and, and farmers to educate them around the use of pharmaceuticals and preventing um, excessive or yeah. inappropriate use. And then, of course, there's improved diagnostics so that we, we are not giving pharmaceuticals for conditions um, or illnesses that don't require yeah. them. Yeah. And then f fourthly, um, end of pipe measures, as I mentioned, the wastewater treatment upgrades, mm -hmm. but also collection um, schemes to take care of um, unused or expired medications. So Australia, they have um, a, a national um, take back program for um, patients or consumers to return to the retail pharmacies, their unused or expired ah, medications so that yeah. they're properly disposed of. Yeah, yeah. And then our final recommendation is to actually combine all of these approaches. Um, we very much recommend that um, countries take a look at the whole life cycle approach of pharmaceuticals from the design through to the, the disposal. Um, and then by taking this approach and incorporating these policies across environment, across agriculture, across chemical yeah. um, policies and government, then we can, we can very much um, have a sustained and... Um, and a, an expansive um, policy approach. Right. So um, this this life cycle approach. I understand the Netherlands is 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 using it, is implementing it to tackle this pharmaceutical problem, in line with the policy recommendations report. So can you share your experience with us? Yeah. Well, it's as you say, it's very much in line with the uh, mm -hmm. the, the the recommendations uh, of the OECD. We started as a chain approach in 2016 in the in the Netherlands. And uh, so we took uh, into account the whole life cycle of uh, pharmaceuticals and we also involved all relevant stakeholders and especially involving those from the pharmaceutical uh, branch and the um, uh, healthcare sector mm -hmm. took us some time, but in the end we managed. And with all those stakeholders, we started making an inventory of all the possible measures along the chain. Um, and we also uh, set of established four so-called rules of the game. Okay. Um, well, you know, you heard them a bit by by, uh, by Hannah. Also, uh, patients shall keep access to the medicines they need. We are not going to ban pharmaceuticals. The second is that uh, we have a, an, a, a pragmatic approach, meaning that all the actions should have important, uh, well, important results on the on the solutions. Then um, all actors uh, act where they can. Mm -hmm. And uh, the f fourth being that stakeholders should not wait for other stakeholders to take the first step. Okay. And in uh, after um, making the inventory in 2017 and 2018, we evaluated all those actions against efficiency and, uh, and effectivity. And uh, that resulted in uh, actions being uh, elim elim eliminated and other being prioritized. And this whole process resulted in an impl implementation program that was sent to the Dutch Parliament in the summer of 2018. I see. And well, we already see uh, concrete results uh, for uh, starting with uh, growing awareness among the, um, uh, well, the, the, uh, the healthcare professionals and the general public, mm -hmm. but also um, a better collection, collection of surplus medicines at the chemi uh, chemists. And uh, finally, we see a real boost of uh, innovative technologies at uh, wastewater treatment uh, plants. And the, the challenge now is to keep up the, the enthusiasm that we have, um, uh, well, we have achieved with the stakeholders mm -hmm. and to have uh, a proper implementation of the program. Wonderful. So, Hannah, once more, where can people find the report or the policy highlights? 
Yes, so policy highlights and their full report online at oecd.org forward slash water. Wonderful. Why didn't you show one last time? There you go, the policy highlights. <laughs> Thank you very much, Hannah, for joining me. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, I guess I'll see you around. And thank you, our audience, for being here and our audience um, online. Thank you very much. Have a good day, and I'll see you at our next SOFA session.